Tonight we're doing a teardown of the last batteries in the lead time lineup. After tonight, I think I've opened up every single battery that they've ever made. This is the Mini, and this is a 100 amp hour battery, but you'll notice it's super small. And I've seen lots of videos on this one, but I haven't seen anyone open it up yet. So who knows if they're using different cells or if they have a different BMS on top, I have no idea. With most of their batteries, they look the same on the inside. This is their trolling motor battery, and it looks the same as the 100 amp hour battery, but with a larger, beefier BMS for large inductive loads. And this battery is impressive. For the money, I don't think you can beat this company. Right now, they're the most popular 12 volt battery I saw on my website. So these are pretty impressive and I haven't heard any complaints yet. And then on the other side of the table, we've got their big battery. This is their biggest one. It's a 12 volt 460 amp hour. So that's 5,888 watt hours. And no one has opened it up. Why don't you guys open these things up? They are so much fun. All you need is an oscillation tool and you can look inside and they're all different. You never know what you're gonna get. And there's a lot of people reviewing the mini one. This might be very popular for RVs because look how small. This is probably the smallest 12 volt 100 amp hour you can buy. Now before we rip them apart, I did do capacity testing. So on the left with the mini, we got 103.82 amp hours. So it tested over it by 103% of its rated capacity. Typically these are 104 upwards of 106 so it is strange that I only got 103 so yeah they probably are using other cells and then on the right the large one we got 484.19 amp hours so they both passed I've never had a lead time or ampere time not pass a capacity test oh my gosh this thing's only 279 dollars isn't that crazy for what you're getting and this one is 19 pounds. Isn't that wild? These are getting better and better every single year. Now, even though this is small and it's lightweight, it's only 19 pounds, it can still charge and discharge with 100 amps. But I don't know how much this one can handle, and I think both of these batteries should have a label with the max charge and discharge current. So let's look it up. And on the website, it says that the charge and discharge current is 250 amps. So let's test that out. Also, it says max discharge current for five seconds is 500 amps. So this should power my car lift. Or will it? Most things can't power it, so let's try it out. This one almost powered my car lift, but it failed. It did spool up the motor really nicely though, especially for the size of battery. That was really impressive. Precharge resistor. If we added a solar charge controller, we would have a solar power system. This thing for 12 volts is really nice. You can build a large system very quickly. And now we have power. Here's the car lift. So this is a Tesla Model X and it's very heavy. So let's, let's try this out. Nope. Actually, I have an inrush clamp. We'll put that on there and see what it is. And I just got it. It's the fanciest one we can use. So let's see what the results are. Oh no. So I just checked the connections just to be sure and the battery connections were loose. The other ones on the inverter were super tight. So let's try again with that inrush clamp meter. Oh no. Actually, these screws are too long. So I'm gonna add some washers and torque it down. I think this might actually fix it. All right, now it should be good. Let's try this again. Dang it, the inrush is only 177 amps. That's not good. Let's try connecting to the screw terminal instead of the outlet. That might be limiting it. Guys, this thing broke off when I was screwing it down. Darn it. So we'll try it one more time, but I think it failed the test, unfortunately. All right, here we go. Now this is a 10 gauge extension cable, so let's try this out. Now last test. Dang it. Actually, the inverter is beeping, so I don't think it's the battery, it's the inverter. But that inverter is rated for 8,000 watt surge capacity. And the battery can only output 6,400 watts. So maybe the inverter is improperly rated. That would suck. I love that company. Those inverters are fantastic. Anyways, let's try another battery just in case. It might need a little bit more help. Now we have the trolling motor battery, which has a great surge capacity. So if this can't do it, it's the inverter's fault. Cause voltage drop is not an issue here. And yeah, I'm not seeing anything else that could be causing this except for the inverter. All right, final attempt. No, 
it doesn't work. And I don't have a larger inverter, so I guess I'll just have to move on. That inverter is faulty, what a bummer. Let's try 250 amps of continuous load and see if it can handle that. And these two heat guns will pull 250 amps. And it's pulling 268 amps, so we'll come back in about 15 minutes and see if it trips it. Seems to be doing well. We're at 270 amps and the voltage is actually dropping. I think this battery is almost dead. Now let's try the car lift one more time, but with a Victron inverter. That would be really cool if an LF inverter can actually push this instead of this high frequency. Oh. <laughs> this has to do it, man. Please, oh, please, oh, please. So a multi plus two, 3000 VA. If it does it, I'm gonna be so mad, man. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think this is better for AC inrush, but not for DC because 177, it should have been much higher. And I wanna measure the inrush with the meter on this conductor. That will be more useful. Inrush. Let's go over to the car lift and see what happens. First attempt with Victron inverter. Yeah, look at that. It freaking did it. That is so satisfying, man. And that's with one battery, so it actually did it. So this time it actually lifted and we pulled 48 amps. And 120 volts, that's 5,700 watts. Now just for fun, we're gonna try the mini. Um, we're gonna see if it can lift up the car. Now light time mini and Victron inverter. Nope, it didn't even try, that was nothing. Actually, let's test out the trolling motor battery and see if it can lift it. Trolling motor battery and Victron inverter. Nope, it didn't even try. Now I lowered the car to see if that will make a difference. So we have the trolling motor battery and Victron inverter and it didn't try, nothing, it just tripped. And you can hear the inverter click off. So that's the battery that shut down, not the inverter. I'm gonna use that Victron inverter for every test so that I know that it can actually work. And for all of those tests, it was 47 amps. So it, it should have powered it, but yeah, I guess these don't have that brute force. Now when that trolling motor battery was connected to the high frequency inverter, it actually spooled up the motor, but not with this one. So it, it's very strange the characteristics of, you know, mixing and matching these different types of inverters with different types of batteries. But yeah, the large one worked, all the other ones didn't. Now we can finally do some teardowns. Jeez. So that's how they get this light weight is we're using pouch cells. I should have guessed pouch cells, super lightweight and super small. And I'm not seeing a temperature sensor. This is only for high temperature right here. This doesn't have low temp charging protection, really? I thought those were coming standard. I mean, even the trolling motor battery has it. Yeah, it doesn't have it. It doesn't mention it in the features. No wonder it's $279. A lot of people like it without the low temp charging because the price is so good. And most people, if it's indoors, you probably don't need it, but I like people to have it, especially if you're in an RV or something and you're just leaving it to charge with solar, you should have low temp charging protection. I always recommend it. And I'm gonna email them and tell them that they need to add it to this one. Cause look at this BMS, this is really nice. Now the big one does not have low temp charging protection, but I've known that for the whole time. Anything with the plus, doesn't have it. And some of my viewers actually say that they don't care about the low temp charging protection because they are cheaper, but I think we need these manufacturers to add it because it's a couple cents extra for that little temperature sensor. So yeah, I think that they should have it anyways. And this model in particular is small. So if you're using this for a specific application where you need a single small battery and you charge when it's cold, you could cause permanent damage. Even though a lot of people don't care, you really gotta think about that. Now besides that, everything else looks really good and I'm not gonna rip this open because I really don't wanna mess up these cells. I wanna actually use this as a gate opener battery because everything is exposed and I wanna see how these pouch cells hold up over time outdoors. A lot of people have asked me about that and I have no idea. We have a lot of data for prismatic cells because there's lots of DIY battery builds with those, but not with these. So that would be a really fun experiment. Anyways, let's move on to the big one.
Now, most lead time batteries I like and all the connections are good, but the BMS is being held down with zip ties. It should be okay, but I don't like that. I like these fixated in a better way. All of their other battery BMSs are held down in a better way. Maybe it's because this model is so large, they didn't plan for that, but that, that doesn't make any sense. They could have put a piece of plastic that went across this or something. I do not like zip ties, but it is on here pretty good. But I'm not seeing anything else that I can critique. The cells look nice. The welds on the bus bars look good. The connections are solid. Especially for the price. This thing is cheaper than most server rack batteries. So that's pretty impressive. But it doesn't have the features of a server rack battery. And it's 12 volt. Who's using 12 volt anymore? Actually, my mobile 48 volt system gets more views on my website than all the 12 volt systems. Those things don't get any more views. I know a lot of people are still building with 12 volts, but more people are building with 48 volts, which is really nice. I've been waiting years for that moment and it's finally happening. Now it would be nice if they had this as a 48 volt battery for the same price, just a basic bare bones battery. That would be really nice. Just using 12 volts costs more money. Even the solar charge controllers, the cables, the inverter, all the conductors, the lugs, it's just a pain in the butt. But first time I've seen zip ties in here, that should be changed. I bet they can change that. But at least we found a critique. I was scared that this would be a boring video. So yeah, you guys need to change this. Also, why is there tape on a heat sink? This is unnecessary. Oh, it's held to the fiber board and that protects it from touching the cells. But yeah, you guys need to change this. No tape on a heat sink and no zip ties. And I think this would be perfect. So that's pretty much it for this video. It was super fun testing the Surge. And I do like these batteries a lot. People do not complain about these. If you ever have problems with these batteries, post it on the forum. And on this channel, we've opened up pretty much all of them at this point. So check out those other videos if you haven't, if you wanna see what a bad build quality looks like. Also, if you're charging and discharging in cold climates, they have heated version batteries batteries and versions with the cold temperature charging protection. So check out those models. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.